Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. And this is live on the power cam. Let's go, man. This guy is crazy. From around the world and across the country, He's in the world. from your own backyard, this is the reality of law enforcement today. Look at that! Come on! For the next 60 minutes, look out, look out. you'll be a witness. Shut your truck off. You'll see everything an officer sees. Negative, negative. The fastest pursuits, the scariest shootouts, the most extreme and unusual crimes I need some help. ever captured on video. Police and news gathering agencies around the world have sent us this footage because they want you to see for yourself the insanity of criminal behavior. Because only when you've seen how it happens and why it happens can you make sure it doesn't happen to you. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. In my 27 years of law enforcement, I've worked with a lot of great cops, people I came to trust and respect. Tonight, you're gonna to see cops who prove their greatness every day. So stick around. We'll show you how they do it. Florala, Alabama. Two patrol cars chase a drunk driver who has a bad attitude. Subject extremely 1055. Officer Greg Jackson is at the wheel of the primary unit. On board with him is police trainee Krista Maddox. Krista, get your gun ready. Maddox is about to get a crash course in high speed pursuits. As the chase barrels along, Jackson stays in constant touch with the backup unit. Do you have any spike strips? That I'm aware of. No spikes means they'll have to try a more dangerous tactic. If you can get with us, we'll try to do a roll and block on him. All right, let's get this fella. The two patrol cars charge up to flank the suspect. He's not gonna let you. The driver knows what they're attempting, so he tries using his blinker to throw them off course. All right, when he turns, I'm gonna get him. But Jackson shows them that they mean business. All right, we've turned left on a county road, Samson, turning left, headed the opposite way. Moments later, the man tries to fake him out again, but Jackson and Maddox aren't fooled. Well, he's turning his blinker left. I believe we're probably gonna go right now. The officer gets tough once more. But this guy just isn't getting the message. You see him slam on brakes on me? 331 North, 331 North. Jackson has had enough. Come on, Walter. The two units race ahead and flank the suspect's car. Then they give him the squeeze. Do what you gotta do, Walt. With the car pinched between them, the officers hit their brakes. But the desperate driver guns his engine and somehow wrenches himself free. That's all right, we'll get him next time. When the suspect exits a mile down the road, officers get another chance. PD, we're still north on 331, turning into the rest here. Walt, go in the back way. While the backup unit hurries to block the exit, Jackson and Maddox follow the suspect into the parking lot. Go to the left, go to the left, going up, going up, going up. The driver leads them through a gauntlet of tractor trailers and motorhomes. Put him in the wall, Walt, right here. The backup unit tries to cut off the exit, but he doesn't have enough time to get into position. The suspect blows right by him, and a heartbeat later, he's right back on the highway. Southbound, 331, southbound, 331, right here on you, Chief. 1012, he's gonna cut you off, man. The police chief's approaching cruiser makes the driver panic, so he takes a hasty detour. We're still good, we're still good, Chief. The chase thunders onto a dirt road. Officer Jackson is familiar with the turf. He's messed up, this is my town right here, buddy. He knows these roads like the back of his hand. Y'all back off, now this road is extremely rough. The home field advantage finally gives Jackson the edge he needs. 
As they approached a well-known intersection, Jackson anticipated the suspect's move. And that's when he knocked him out of the race. Now, trainee Maddox gets another crash course. How to arrest a drunken suspect. When this drunk driver tore up the byways, subject extremely 1055, the Florala PD went on the offensive. All right, let's get this fella. And Officer Greg Jackson gave Krista Maddox the hard hitting training she needs for high speed pursuits. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 1988. These things happen in various places, and uh, today it happened here. A madman holds a room full of school children and their teachers at gunpoint. Police learn he is armed with more than 2,000 rounds of ammunition. Hostage negotiations are underway. Looks like somebody's making contact with a guy now. But the gunman refuses to budge. Instead, he emerges with a list of demands. At the time, Assistant Chief Ken Swindle was the head negotiator. He had several questions that he had listed. What is life? What is truth? Why do we pay the president? General broad questions that uh, had no certain meaning to them. Outside, officers stay ready for anything. While inside, Swindle works hard to develop a rapport with the kidnapper. As the day wears on, frightened city officials are called in to assess the situation. I do have medical 1040 heading that way. Pressure is mounting to take action, but Swindle continues speaking calmly with the suspect. Unit stand by. He talks the man into letting officers bring in food and drinks for the children. It's a small step, but now he knows the hostage taker can be reasoned with. All unit, wait for further instructions. As talks persist, Swindle learns more and more about what makes this maniac tick. He thought that he would get rich from the statements that he made, that he was going to be able to go on television shows, write books. Police fear his warped logic may lead him to turn against the children. Got to be careful. Then Swindle's negotiations begin to pay off. Everybody back off. Just get back. A young girl is released. <laughs> Later, more hostages are set free. Things are moving in the right direction. Unfortunately, over 20 students and four teachers still remain inside. As night falls, there are signs that the man may be tiring. He asked for a full presidential pardon. We just told him that was not possible. He was not satisfied with that. Then he wanted a videotape of the governor pardoning him for his actions. And so eventually Governor Hunt did do a pardon, which was under duress and which could not be held uh, accountable. The videotape pardon is delivered, and now they must wait. Everybody hold their position. All of the day's negotiations lead up to just one moment the moment of decision. There he is. Suddenly, the man appears clutching his rifle. After a brief discussion, officers receive excellent news. Right, turn the camera on. Come out now, okay? As soon as the suspect's weapons are secured, officers make their move. Oh, you don't promise me. Don't no, you promise me. You don't promise me. He's wrestled to the ground. And for the first time in 12 hours, the children are free to leave the school. The suspect, James Harvey, is currently serving a life sentence for kidnapping. Assistant Chief Ken Swindle is now the chief of police. He still sees many of the children whose lives he helped save. It makes me feel good to see them and talk to them again. They were the heroes. They were the ones that was in there and had to go through that pressure and all. We were just there doing the best we could. The day was long, but it was worth it. No one was hard. In the end, the patience and perseverance of Ken Swindle and his team of officers brought about a happy conclusion to a terrifying day. The weather can be the deciding factor in a pursuit. When it's good, we take it for granted. But when it's bad, it could mean disaster.
Guilford County, North Carolina. When an 81 Buick tears through a red light, pursuing officers have more on their hands than someone running from a traffic ticket. Not only is the blue car stolen, the sedan stealing driver has two outstanding warrants against him. Trying to outrun a jail term, he pushes the old car up to 80 miles an hour, even though stormy weather has made these streets treacherous. Looking out for public safety, police have to reduce their speed, but the daring driver has been on escape at any cost. Even though at these speeds, disaster could strike at any turn. Traffic is thick right here. As deputies keep pace with the fleeing Skylark, they know how perilous this rain-soaked pavement can be. Watch out now. It's slick right here. Watch out. The reckless suspect barrels down the slick roads and leads deputies headlong toward a rainy day catastrophe. A stalled vehicle dangerously blocks their path, and deputies react in a heartbeat. The streets are too wet for this kind of maneuvering. So when the suspect takes another sharp turn, one of the squad cars nearly loses it. As one cruiser slides across the road, another police car goes head to head to stop the suspect. But the marauding vehicle never even slows down. The daredevil car thief punches the accelerator, and in a maniacal move, he runs another red light blasting into a parking lot. Officers have only moments to take advantage of the situation. Go, 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 go! A road spike is deployed, while another patrol car blocks the driveway. The crafty crook brazenly braces right past, but not without spearing his right front tire on the spikes. He's got a flat head. And when the driver jams into a field, his vehicle immediately sinks into the mud. This bad boy isn't going anywhere, except to jail. When an officer is in a rainy day pursuit, it can require lightning fast reflexes. But when this car thief thundered through town, he soon discovered that neither rain, nor slick roads, nor mud could deter the Guilford County deputies. Go, 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 go. Coming up. Watch out, watch out. On world's wildest police video, prime time crime. Uh, this is where it gets dangerous. High drama in the courtroom. See where they put him. Harsh reality in the streets and fast talk in the city. And you gonna tell me I wasn't doing the speed limit? The young and the reckless. Meet the strong arm of the law, next. Speeds of 100 miles an hour. 1020, he's running. Justice, criminals run from it. Officers pursue it. The share unit is overhead right now. But nobody likes it when justice isn't served. Some people respect the privilege of driving, and some people don't. Pinellas County, Florida. Corporal Richard Nalvin pursues two drunken felons, rocketing their way across town at astonishing speeds. He was driving a five-liter high-performance Mustang, which was at the time really not uh, something that majority of our cruisers could catch. Within a matter of seconds, the suspects virtually disappear into the traffic up ahead. Corporal Nalvin guns his engine, trying hard to catch up. He spots the Mustang cutting through traffic. The narrow roads and high speeds make it difficult to avoid other drivers. Corporal Nalvin gains momentum, closing the gap between himself and the fleeing men. I got it. The driver uses his blinkers in a bizarre attempt to confuse the corporal. He viciously uses other motorists as rolling roadblocks, but it's not enough to shake this experienced officer. Then without warning, the man slams on his brakes. He veers left, then smashes into a parked car. The suspects try to run. But the corporal's men have them surrounded. Freeze, get on the ground! Get on the ground! Uh, you really feel good about uh, catching someone like that. It's something that is worthwhile. 
in the end, it doesn't matter how fast you drive. If you don't do it legally and soberly, the privilege of driving will turn into a right to remain silent. In a court of law, tensions run high, especially when someone other than a judge tries to deliver justice. Jacksonville, Florida. A child is killed in a drive-by shooting. The boy's killers have been found guilty and await sentencing. In court, the victim's grandmother finally gets her say. She wants the stiffest penalty possible. See where they put him, what it did to him. What happens next is unbelievable. All hell breaks loose. The dead child's father attacks the defendants. Other family members leap into the fray, punching and pounding, even beating a man with an umbrella. It's an explosive situation. Officers and bailiffs risk serious injury, trying to stop this violent free-for-all. But they know they have to break it up fast. With a room full of agitated spectators, this fight could become a riot. Bailiffs pull apart the fighting relatives, and the dead child's father is cuffed, even though officers understand his rage. At last, sheriff's deputies begin to clear the courtroom. For some, this painful day just got much, much worse. Because emotions run high in a court of law, officers have to keep the proceedings under control. But there's only so much they can do. Police can't turn back time, and they can't bring a loved one back to life. All they can do is prevent more violence and keep order in the court. Council Bluffs, Iowa. A Chevy van runs a stop sign. My Harrison and uh, Harmony. But when police try to pull it over, the driver shows he's not stopping for signs or cops. Brown full size Chevy van. This man has a secret. Not only is he under the influence, the northbound on uh, Harrison, he's carrying a concealed weapon. The suspect roars through this quiet neighborhood, a neighborhood he strangely refuses to leave. One now we're heading southbound, Bennett. He makes one right turn after another. But he's turning up Harrison again. Going down the same streets over and over. Harrison Morgan going towards Marshall. It's clear this guy needs to stay on familiar turf. But when police start to predict his pattern, he's going to go north on Mr. Spring. He does the unpredictable. Going on DeLong. In a surprise move, the driver turns left and races down a dark country road. Doing about 60. Picking up speed, the van skirts the shoulder, kicking rocks and debris onto the cruiser. He's almost lost it. Held bent on escape, the driver doesn't see the bend in the road until it's too late. Oh, he's 1050. He's 1050. The Chevy nosedives, cartwheels, and comes crashing down. The impact is so violent, it hurls the driver from the car. Looks like he's been ejected. The officer rushes to the suspect's aid, but he knows not to let his guard down. He might be taken. It turns out the driver truly needs help. He's unconscious. And paramedics rush the suspect away. He's lucky this time. He makes it out alive. What began as a minor traffic stop ended with a ruined van and a ruined man. He's unconscious. A man who made several right turns. Oh, he's 1050. He's 1050. And one wrong choice. Coming up. Uh, this is where it gets dangerous. On world's wildest police videos, Road Rage. A madman. He's being real reckless now. Has a bad plan. Yeah, with another vehicle. A reckless team creates a scene. Plus, an innocent driver turns lucky survivor. More law and disorder. Hey, hit the spikes. Just around the corner. A countdown to disaster. Four on the floor. It can be very dangerous here. Two for the road. One for the books. Number of winners, zero. When you spot a pursuit from a helicopter, you can't tell who's driving or why it all started. All you know is lives are in danger. In Los Angeles, police pursue an armed and dangerous felon who's having a bad day. Okay, he's turning northbound now. 24 hours earlier, 
He was arrested and his van was impounded. When he was freed on bail, the man wanted his van back, but didn't want to pay the fine. We've been told that the man brandished a knife at workers in the tow yard and then stole his own van back. Now, he's wearing a bulletproof vest, armed and ready to do battle. We're coming into some congestion ahead. With traffic slowing to a crawl, officers have to exercise extreme caution. One wrong move, and this unstable hothead could take a hostage. This is very dangerous. Police keep their distance. Uh, this has become a very tense situation. But once the suspect's able to accelerate, his driving takes on a menacing tone. He's just jumping across lanes now. He races through the suburbs and into a quiet neighborhood. CHP now being joined by LA County units. The dangerous fugitive pulls into the driveway of this home, his mother's home. But even mom can't help him out of this situation. He's now getting out of the van. Officers advance with guns drawn. They're prepared for the worst. What happens next surprises everyone. This guy is actually knocking on the door. He may think nothing of terrifying other drivers, but at mom's house, this armed marauder minds his manners. Still, he refuses to surrender. Police will be forced to take him down. Officers fire non-lethal beanbag bullets at the suspect. He goes down. Code four, repeat, code four. Reeling from the beanbags, he's cuffed and taken to jail for the second time in 24 hours. A night behind bars didn't teach this knife-wielding thug any lessons. When he got out, he decided to get even. The man brandished a knife at workers in the tow yard. It was a bad decision, because what was a simple tow charge... A very tense situation. ...became serious legal charges. Dallas, North Carolina. An officer pulls a woman over for speeding. I clocked you at 48, and that's the 35 mile an hour zone. When he returns to his motorcycle, a police cruiser stops to make sure that everything's okay. It is, except for the morning chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm about to freeze to death. Oh. Yeah. A distracted rubbernecker is so busy looking at the officers that he doesn't see what's right in front of him. The woman hopes the officer will cut her some slack. But while the police car pulls up to the accident, the motorcycle officer returns to the speeder and calmly finishes writing the ticket. You can come to court on that day and I'll go from there. Okay. After all, the dangers of driving unsafely on this country road have just become painfully clear. A motorcycle is a beautiful and exciting machine. But if you don't respect its weaknesses, it can be a dangerous ride. Sangamon County, Illinois. A sheriff's deputy pursues a pair of reckless youths on a stolen motorcycle. At these speeds, one false move can mean the difference between life and death. There is no room for air. Foolishly, the suspects run red lights and blast down the wrong side of the road. They have no regard for anyone's life, including their own. Without helmets and wearing shorts, they look like they're dressed for a walk in the park, not a motorcycle ride. Surviving a fall at these speeds would be miraculous. The sheriff's deputies work in sync to corral the suspects, trying to avoid a hazardous accident. Oh, watch out now, let him hit you. The nimble motorcycle squirms away, and the cocky driver thinks he's unstoppable. Suddenly, the men attempt to escape down a side street. The cruisers can't keep up on the narrow road, but the authorities are about to get some help from above. Unable to steer on the rain-soaked asphalt, the suspects make their smartest move of the night. They dump the bike and run. Get ready. Knowing that the area is surrounded, the deputies calmly follow behind, warm and dry in their cruiser. The soaking suspects run right into a sheriff's unit up ahead, where they're arrested for speeding to a loo and possession of stolen property. These suspects tried everything they could to get away with a stolen motorcycle. But in the end, they couldn't outrun the Sagamon deputies or Mother Nature. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, 
desperate games. If I can get up there, I'll try to stop him. It's hide and seek. I can smell the butt in there. Leapfrog. Get in front of him, dog him off. Charades. I can't tell what it is. Plus tag. I got him, got him. And it's coming right at you. Energy's caution, it's all gravel. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Okay, hit the spikes. Cops curve team. When litter bugs what are, you now? are hiding drugs and joy riding kids are on the skids. But grown up crime gets grown up time. I can smell the marijuana in the car. Cincinnati, Ohio, 2 a.m. A suspected drunk driver refuses to stop. The closer police get, the faster this suspect runs. Copy, 10 forward. Back up and round. He jumps from lane to lane, dangerously weaving back and forth, ready to cut off anyone trying to pass. Suddenly, he jets across open lanes, tears up an off-ramp, and plunges into downtown. The early morning streets might look empty, but police still have to be alert for oncoming drivers or pedestrians, especially with a suspect this reckless on the loose. The suspected drunk blows around two innocent motorists, careening blindly around one corner after another. When the officer catches up here, he discovers the man driving on the sidewalk. He careens back onto the street, makes one turn too many, and slams sideways into the curb. The impact disables the car's front axle, bringing this mad dash to a grinding halt. When he refuses to surrender, police are forced to take him down. As it turns out, this hard-charging DUI suspect wasn't drunk at all. He was just a 15-year-old kid who snuck out of his house to go joyriding in his uncle's car. Hiding information from an officer is never a good idea. They're going to find out anyway, but no officer enjoys being lied to. Shawnee County, Kansas. Sheriff's deputies stopped two teens on suspicion of littering. Hello. Well, we thought you guys threw something out the window over there. What were you tossing out? The driver denies the charge. No, we didn't yeah. throw nothing out. OK. But that's not the only thing the deputies are curious about. When we pulled up behind you guys, he's moving all around and what, uh, you guys hiding something under the seat up there? No. No? You don't have no weed or nothing like that in the car? No. No? The deputy then asks for permission to search the car. Can we go ahead and take a look under the seat? Is that all right? There, if there's just a little person you stuff, just cough it up and we'll get, you on, we'll get you guys back on the road. The girl hesitates. That's OK? That's OK? I, I don't I don't have to. My problem is when I pull up, it looks like he's stuffing something under the seat, all right? If there's nothing under there, we'll get you guys back on the road, okay? They finally consent, and the deputies begin searching the vehicle. Right, it's not long before something turns up. I can say I smell a little The teens claim there are no drugs in the car, but the deputies sense otherwise. I can smell the bud in there. When was marijuana smoked in there? Still, the pair refused to come clean. You just got a joint or two, a quarter or a half. We've got other things out here that we're worried about, all right? Then the deputy's suspicions are confirmed. He finds a small amount of marijuana in the passenger's door. Without warning, the young man latches onto the deputy's arm. It takes both officers to wrestle him to the ground. I'm trying to be outside. The driver stands by stunned as her boyfriend is placed in handcuffs. For a little freaking a little bit of weed. You went through all that. The deputies now have every reason to believe the teens are hiding more. They search the rest of the car. Wait, what did, what did we tell you? Did you hear yeah, what we said? A little personal use. Cough it up, and we'll send you down the road. Oh, we got it. Sorry, did that. I was just paranoid because I'm on probation. Clean up. Finding nothing else, they discuss what their next move will be. What do you want to do with him, dude? This teen is about to get the surprise of his life. This is what we're inclined to do. He should probably go to jail for uh, 
obstruction and you should probably go to jail for the marijuana, okay? We told you before that that was personal use. We'll get you on the road and you'll go on about your evening. Um, we're still inclined to do that. The teens are amazed. The deputies will simply inform the boy's probation officer without piling on extra charges. You guys hiding something under the seat up there? No. no? Today, these teens learned a valuable lesson. You can smell the blood. Hey, don't got the truck too. Be straight with the police. Oh, catch we. What, did, what did we tell you? And they'll be straight with you. We've got other things out here that we're worried about, all right? Spike strips are the great equalizers in a police pursuit. No tire on the road can stand up to this kind of torture. Bone Steel, South Dakota. Highway Patrol Trooper Jeff Lanning plays a critical role during a pursuit in progress. While his colleagues chase a driver in a stolen truck, Lanning scrambles to get ahead and set down spike strips. Moments later, Okay, hit the spikes. He pulls the spikes away so the police cruisers can follow. He rejoins the pursuit, only to learn that his job isn't over yet. Still got two uh, tires up on the back. Luckily, this native trooper could drive these back roads with his eyes closed. He takes a shortcut and once again positions the spikes. Okay, he got him again. A stream of patrol cars follows. The officer is confident that the suspect will slow down, but he doesn't. Looks like you only got one back tire in Three tires down, one to go. Again, Lanning leapfrogs the pursuit and gets ready to throw the spikes down. This time, when the driver hits the strip, he glares at the spike-wheeling trooper. Yeah, he just shook his head. By now, the hobbled truck is running on rims, but the suspect still refuses to stop. Four flats. He's just looking for a place to run, I think. <laughs> what you are about to see is unbelievable. When the officers force the driver into the dirt, Lanning has to throw it into reverse to avoid getting hit by the angry suspect. The suspect floors it. Metal rims grind into dirt, somehow finding traction. The trooper spins away just in time. When he turns around, his partners have the suspect under control. This arrogant truck thief thought he could slip into the back roads and get away. But thanks to a heads-up trooper with a trusty spike strip, the crook's escape plans went flat. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, criminals are ducking and dodging when a teller cancels a check. A rebel... And you gonna tell me I wasn't doing the speed limit? ...creates his own cause. Get on the ground! And a driver tries running on empty. Stop the car now. Next. Getaways go awry when a hard-headed bank robber ducks the bucket. And thrill-seeking teens down the ditch. go down for the count. 1050, 1050, he's up running. A domestic dispute is always a tough situation for an officer, especially when it involves a young child. Post Falls, Idaho. An officer has been called to this driveway for an unusual domestic dispute. This woman was warming up the family sedan to take her children to school. But her eight-year-old son did not want to go. Instead, he locked himself inside the idling car, and he refuses to budge. His mother and the officer plead with the boy to get out, but he won't listen. He taunts the grown-ups by toying with the gear shift and the pedals. If provoked, he could crash the car into the house or back up into the patrol cruiser. The officer pulls his cruiser up close to the sedan. He wants to give it as little room as possible to gain momentum. Next, he tries to jimmy the lock. The kid continues to play with the gear shift. Suddenly, he finds reverse. Without the patrol car blocking his way, he would have rolled straight down the hill behind him. The only direction left to go now is forward right into the house. The officer hurries up with the lock. Just as he starts to open the door, the boy punches the gas. Thankfully, the kid sensed he was going too far and hit the brake. But that doesn't mean this pint-sized rebel is ready to give up completely. It takes both the officer and the mother to pry the kid out of the car. 
days later, the boy will send his apology to the Post Falls PD. He will explain his misbehavior by saying he was just having a bad day. But in the meantime, he'll be serving hard time in the one place he never wanted to be, school. Seoul, South Korea. With plenty of money on hand and no bulletproof glass to protect them, the tellers in this bank have to respond quickly when they see anything suspicious. For instance, this guy who enters wearing a motorcycle helmet. As he rummages through his bag, the women share a look. This guy could be trouble. The tellers reach into cubby holes in front of them. They have a hidden defense against robbers, a special gun filled with pepper spray. But how will that stop someone who's wearing a helmet? This guy thought of everything, except closing his face mask. Suddenly, he attacks. One teller sprays him in the eyes. The disoriented robber flails at her wildly and reveals his weapon. It's a fake gun. The second teller leaps to the rescue, clubbing the robber with anything she can get her hands on. The overmatched thief beats a hasty retreat, empty-handed and humiliated. Just like that, this robbery attempt is over. It's always dangerous to tangle with a crook. But when this novice robber tried to make an early withdrawal, these feisty tellers dealt out the penalty. In Sangamon County, Illinois, four teenagers escape from Juvenile Hall in a stolen car. Police are hot on their tail. The Pontiac rockets down the freeway at speeds in excess of 115 miles an hour. At this speed, I don't want to get too close to it. Even a semi doesn't slow them down, as the juvenile jailbirds veer around it in the emergency lane. Leaving in and out of truck, truck, truck traffic. Officers could take drastic measures to stop this chase, but they don't want to harm these kids. However, when the terrorizing teen behind the wheel intentionally swerves at a police unit, officers have to clamp down. He's being real reckless now. With another cruiser joining the chase, police show they mean business. But the dangerous delinquents won't give up. Instead, they jerk the steering wheel to the right, sideswiping the nearest police unit. Incredibly, the cruiser holds the road. Yeah, the cruiser was another vehicle. Now these kids are in serious legal trouble. Police are determined to take them down fast. The cruisers form a rolling blockade to box in the bad boys. Trapped and panicking, the driver cuts to the left and rumbles down the shoulder. Going into the, medium, trying to pass. the Pontiac blasts over the median, hurls across oncoming traffic, and crashes into a ditch. He's putting them in a the ditch. The driver bails out and hides in some nearby cornfields. He's arrested the next day, but his passengers are busted on the spot. Despite their legal troubles, these careless kids got off easy. 56, I got a their highway hijinks could have resulted in serious injury or even death. Being real reckless now. Because they're minors, they didn't end up in the state pen. Yeah, the cruiser was another vehicle. But if they keep committing adult crime, they'll eventually do adult time. Next, on world's wildest police videos. Need immediate assistance a back-talking bad boy. Five miles over the speed limit. Fights the law. You didn't have on your radar detector. And the law fights back. Often, police are criticized for being overly aggressive. Uh, sometimes officers seem angry or on edge. But chances are, they're merely being cautious. Mount Vernon, Illinois. The man in this maroon sedan is having some trouble going the speed limit and even more trouble stopping. He bumps along rural side streets, going through one barricade and then another. Finally, he pulls his car to the side of the road, the wrong side of the road. Suddenly, the suspect lunges from his car and charges the police cruiser. Fearing for his safety, the officer draws his gun. He tries to explain why he stopped the man. 
clock your speeding back there on Broadway. I need to see your driver's license. Here go my driver's license right here. The suspect soon works himself into a fury. Five miles over the speed limit. Five miles. Five. And you gonna tell me I wasn't doing the speed limit? Caught in his own contradiction, the suspect tries another angle. Okay, why my radar detector didn't pick up? Because you didn't have on your radar detector. Right. That's why. So how the f did you clock me at 50 f miles if you didn't have them? The angry man defiantly walks away. Y'all think I'm gonna stop through y'all anytime y'all get behind me? I'm gonna keep on driving. You gonna have to follow me into I. Backup arrives. And now it's the officer's turn to talk. This is a laser gun. Your radar detector will not pick it up. See. 56 mile an hour. Right there it is. That's why your radar detector didn't go off. Because of his conduct. That's why. He gives one final note before all hell breaks loose. Can you do it, Jim? Yes. The suspect refuses to go quietly. He leads officers on a furious chase, but is arrested only moments later. In this case, the danger was obvious. Unfortunately, things aren't always so clear cut. An officer needs to constantly be on alert. They never know what's gonna happen from one minute to the next. Down in Austin, Texas, a man is driving erratically. Trooper Earl Gilliam runs the driver's plates. But they come back clean. The suspect slows to a crawl and eventually stops. Gilliam waits for the man to turn off his engine, but he never does. He toys with the trooper, first decelerating, then speeding away. After a long game of cat and mouse, he decides to pull over. Trooper Gilliam wastes no time approaching the pickup. He is prepared to write the man a ticket and send him on his way, but he never gets the chance. The officer is hit three times and left for dead. Each second is more critical than the last. Passing motorists realize the trooper needs their help. Horrified, they use Gilliam's radio to call for assistance. Paramedics arrive just in time. Thanks to the efforts of Good Samaritans, the trooper's life is saved. The suspect was not so lucky. He was fatally wounded the next night when he tried to kill another cop. Police put their lives on the line every day. They don't want to come across as being touchy or impolite, but most officers would much rather get the situation under control than face the consequences of having no control at all. Just hold your breath here for a second. Crooks are motivated by easy money or the thrill of the moment. But crime comes with a cost. See where they put him. And as long as crooks are running, hiding, the gun. and lying, don't tell me I wasn't doing the speed limit. Police will be there. Don't move. To see the criminals pay. <laughs>